I'd like to call somebody to the stage that you know as a folk singer, but that you haven't met in his other role. Paul is a comedian with a unique point of view and commentary, and in this capacity, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with me to the stage my good friend, my compatriot, Paul Stuckey. That was the sound of a golf ball. <laughs> or if you're a ping pong enthusiast, that was the sound of a ping pong ball. Except generally you hear it. <laughs> That's the sound of a match between a golfer and a ping pong enthusiast. <laughs> I played golf today. 18 holes I played golf. I did pretty good, too. I think you would have been very proud of me. Four. Five. Six. Seven. I don't like sports very much. There's a vast number of sports that I am not involved in. There's water skiing. In order to water ski, really, you should swim, right? You're not gonna stay up there all the time now. And I, I don't like to swim, really. You know what swimming is to me? Staying alive when I'm in the water. Barely. I'll do anything to stay afloat. Even swallow CO2 cartridges. <laughs> but I didn't come out here to talk about sports. I really, I came out here... Because Peter talks about status. And I cannot think of one material object that has more status in this country than the automobile. And it starts at a very early age now. Right? I mean... Now, at 14, kids want the car, right? They get cheater's permits so they can drive. <laughs> you get a learner's permit at 15, a cheater's permit at 14. And it's, I guess it's really necessary because you lose a lot of face calling up a girl and asking her if you can pedal right over and pick her up, right? <laughs> you don't really go for that anymore. Anyway. And the, if you look back on all the times that you had the automobile, aside from a few interesting Saturday evenings, you got to admit that one of the nicest times of all was the Sunday afternoon, if you could get the car. You come down the stairs. <laughs> Mom, Dad, gonna take the car. <laughs> Beautiful day for drive, think I'll go out. <laughs> and then they'd, then they'd level you with that giant killer, right? <laughs> If you were fast, you'd say, Mom, Dad, have I done my homework? <laughs> Run out the door. <laughs> you'd pick up three other great pretenders at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The time is now 10 o'clock in the evening. The same four guys are in the same car. <laughs> well, what do you want to do? <laughs> I don't know. What do you want to do? <laughs> hey, we've been driving for seven hours. <laughs> Hey, I got an idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, what's that? Let's go to a drive-in restaurant and look at the girls. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, here they are, but they're all from our high school. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's a carload over there. <laughs> there's a place right next to them. Let's get it. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Here's the conversation in the girls' car you never heard. Here they come. <laughs> there they are. Don't look at them. Remember the time when 
drive-ins first opened and the girls used to come out to take your order. Now you're lucky, you know, if you get a girl in slacks who delivers it. I understand they're even putting in conveyor belts in some drive-in restaurants. But there was a time when the little girls came running out in short little skirts. Remember them? <laughs> right? You pull in. <laughs> that little girl would come running out. <laughs> May I take your order, sir? Yes, but I don't believe it's on the menu. <laughs> they, don't, they don't let you flirt anymore now. They give you a little green box with a white button on it, a little speaker grill, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, well, we'd like... One cheeseburger deluxe special extra. The one, the one that you have out here with a little white cup of that, whatever that's in there. <laughs> we'll take it, whatever it is. And uh, we'd like two hamburgers, medium rare, with everything on them, and one hamburger, no, one hamburger, me, no hamburgers. One, one franc and three chili burgers. Okay? All right? And then we like two chocolate shakes, regular thick, for spoons, you know. <laughs> like that. And then, and then we like two strawberry shakes, thin. Wa water them down or melt them down a little, okay? Because we got somebody here with chapped lips, and they like that. Here. <laughs> All right. Do, do you, you understand what I mean? Are you there? <laughs> well, could you could you tell us what we have, please? And four six packs. We'll take it. <laughs> And after you get your food order in, you got at least 40 minutes to wait. Even if it's just a cup of coffee, you got 40 minutes to wait. And you cannot get out of your car. Right? Remember there was a time when drive-ins first opened, you used to pull in or get out, exchange hellos, greetings. Evidently, some people were getting out and exchanging something a little heavier than hellos and greetings. Right? <laughs> so they have policemen there to keep you in your car. Right? You can be 47 years old and drop your credit cards on the ground. Officer, that's my wallet. I don't care who you are, kid. Back in the car. <laughs> if you do get out, you got to be very careful because the new restaurants have radar now. <laughs> right? so, the, so you have to crawl on your belly between the cars. <laughs> right? You get over to the side of the car and you... <laughs> Down here. I, I can't come up. They'll spot me. Put down your window. Power windows, huh? Woo, this is a pretty fancy car. Hey, you're a pretty fancy broad. get out of a drive-in restaurant without being maimed, there was a sporting event taking place at the traffic light, remember? It involved two characters. Mr. Businessman, who drove a four-door family sedan, black wall tires, automatic transmission, and seated next to it in a 1941 gray primer-coated Ford with its rear end two inches off the ground, the tomato cans from mufflers, with his back to the driver's window, his left arm draped over the steering wheel, the right hand gripped onto the gear shift lever, a sneer on his lips sat, the kid. Well, Mr. Businessman has just had his bands tightened, see? And... <laughs> Those of you that are not quite sure what I mean by having your bands tightened, the bands are the rings in an automatic transmission 
which actually affect the gear change. Uh huh. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you an example. This this is an automobile with tight bands. <sighs> This is an automobile with loose bands. <laughs> well, Mr. Businessman has just had his bands tightened, and he thinks that he will show the kid a thing or two. <laughs> Meanwhile, the kid <laughs> has inched these two fingers up over his left arm. This is the universal sign language among teenagers for dragging. You, you probably recall Winston Churchill during the war years, <laughs> which, which everyone assumed meant V for victory. You see, actually, if you'll also recall, sir, Winston Churchill smokes a cigar, right? He used to hold it in here, <laughs> right? And occasionally, he would turn to his friends on the stage and say, "Want to drag?" See, and the kids picked it up. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the light changes to amber, and Mr. Businessman decides to get very daring. He pulls the automatic transmission down into low. He puts one foot on the brake, still holding the foot on the brake in order to get that extra fast start. He pulls the automatic transmission down into low and pushes down on the accelerator five inches. <laughs> The car is internally hemorrhaging. <laughs> he knows. He knows. He knows he's going to have to have another band job. <laughs> he is not going to let the kid show him up. <laughs> the light changes to green, and Mr. Businessman is off. Looks at him, he's down there 80, 90, 95, 96, 97, 98 miles an hour. He looks outside the window, and the kid's not even there. <laughs> you know what's there? <laughs> he looks in the rearview mirror, and the kid's still back at the corner. He never races anybody. He just sits there and scares the hell out of him as they fly. <laughs>